Hey there, Heather Boyd Wire here, and today it's Tip Tuesday. What you're going to need for this project are your tools. I'm using 20 gauge wire. I have a couple of these cell phone strap charm straps. You can buy them actually on Etsy, just the little findings, and then just add your own charms to them. But I'll also show that you how to make your own. I have a variety of beads. And then the cord I'm going to use, I have a one millimeter cotton cord and then a much thinner uh, cord. So whatever cord you have that works would be great. And I'm going to make a cute one with a little wooden spool. I'll link up below the shop where I bought those spools. So to make the spool, take about a 12 inch piece of wire, could be a little longer or shorter depending on how thick your wire is, and then just hold it onto the spool, like hold it with your thumb here, and then wind it around. So you just want to fill up that space with colorful wire. So this is a nice purple wire from uh, the Artistic Wire, it's uh, from the Beadlon Company. I like this wire, it molds quite well, the color is beautiful, and we're just going to wind this around a couple of times until you've filled up that whole area with wire. And then what you want to do next is just take this end and bend it up like, you don't need more than an inch up there, so just bend it up like that, and then bring this one around a last time. So this is nice and tight and filled in there and then just pull it tight tight so there's no slack and then take this end and wind it around here. So we're just going to wind it all the way around and then we're just going to clip this in there and then you can take your flat pliers and push it down and then this end here we're also going to just take it and pull it so it closes you know the gap there just clip it so it's nice and flush and then you're going to push that end in as well so to attach it to the charm strap we're just going to take a 20 gauge piece of wire and i'm going to bend the end in a loop you want the loop to be big enough so it doesn't go through the spool there so we're just going to put that through and then just see it just holds in place there and then if you want to add some nice beads i have a nice little variety of beads of course you guys know i love the miracle beads so we'll stick a four millimeter miracle bead on there and then a little metal spacer bead can go in the middle we'll just stick that one on there and then a larger six millimeter a bead so that looks really cute like that you can make it longer or shorter however you like and then what you want to do if you don't want it too dangly you can just go ahead and bend it at a bit of an angle and then take this one and you're going to form a loop so just bring it around here just right around to close that end because you don't want it to get caught and open up so we're just going to twist it all the way around to secure it and then just push the little sharp end in. So there you have your cute little spool that can be an earring as well. But what we're going to do is just simply take our charm uh, holder thing and if it has a lobster clasp on it just open up and slip it on and if it doesn't just slip it onto the jump ring. And then what you would do is just take your scissors if they are going to be a scissor charm which would be really cute with the spool is you're just going to stick it through here and put that through the loop and go like that. I was actually introduced to these when I was selling jewelry at a quilters guild and I had a special request for them and I thought they were super cute. So especially for quilters, if they get together and they want to know whose scissors are whose, this is a great idea and it's a perfect gift. So here I made another one with a little cute butterfly bead and if you have one of these charms without a lobster clasp it's easy enough just to open up the little jump ring, stick that on there and then just close it up. And there you have that and then the same thing you would just take it on your scissors. You probably wouldn't put two on there but just to show you how to put it on and put that through there like a little sort of slip knot and there you have the butterfly one.
Now if you want to make your own, I have some one millimeter cotton cord here. You can just kind of measure it to about what the other ones are. It looks like it's about an inch and a half, maximum two inches. And then just hold these two ends together and do a slip knot. So bring it around, like all the way around, and then stick those two ends through and you're just going to tie a little knot and then just kind of compare it to about what size it is. I would say between like one and a half to two inches. And then if you want to pull this knot really tight, so just hold it with the ends and pull it. So this is like super tight here. You could even put a little drop of crazy glue in there if you want to. And then we can just like trim that a little bit. Yeah, crazy glue is always a good idea. And then just pinch it in a little bit so it's not so bulky. And then we're gonna make a little spring. So we're just gonna take some of our 20 gauge wire. You can use 18 gauge wire to make it a little thicker as well. And then just take a round form like the end of a crochet hook or a um, knitting needle and then just bring it around to form a spring. So we're just gonna go around and around and around and around around. It doesn't have to be too big. Okay, and then we want to make sure it's going to be large enough. So just kind of like unwind it a little bit. So once you've done the spring, just kind of bend this one over here and we want to make a loop here. So take this one and just bring it around to do a loop. I would use probably an 18 gauge wire would be better because you want it to be uh, nice and sturdy. And then we're just going to clip that one here, bring that one over here. So you've got your little spring and try to center this in the middle if you can so it's nice and centered. And then we want to take our little knotted end here, stick it right inside so it goes right to the end. You can also add uh, some uh, crazy glue if you want. And then you're just going to bring this and just tighten it up because you really want it to tighten around the knot to hold it in place. So just bring it like at least one full turn around and then give it a little clip. And then take your flat pliers just to pinch it in place here. Okay, so you have this cool little like charm here and then you can add something on the end. Let's stick on our ladybug and then we can put a little black bead there if we want. And if you want to make it extra fancy you can put a heart bead on there and then we can maybe put another little metallic bead is cute and my favorite miracle bead. So you could spend hours deciding on what kind of color combinations and bead combinations you want, but that looks cute. And then we're just going to bend it to the side, get our round pliers, bring them around here. Before you loop the wire around, I would just stick it right on here. Just, or you can add it with a jump ring if you want, whatever you uh, like the look of, and then just twist that around here. So just twist that here and then we can attach it to a pair of scissors. So we're just going to bring that in here. Same thing. We're going to stick the ladybug through and there we have our cute little charm. So for this one, I have a thinner cord. It's almost like a little embroidery cord. I have a already made spring end here and a little charm. It's just a little yin yang charm and some 20 gauge wire. So what I'll do first is I'll take my cord. Like I said, it's quite a bit thinner. So just use what you have. You know, it's you could probably get something at a local shop that uh, you can use either, either a craft store or something like that and just pull this in a slip knot to the length you want, like about an inch and a half. If the cord is too thin, do a double knot. You just want it to be able to sit inside the spring end and hold in place. So either a single or a double knot, whatever you think is good. You could always put a dab of crazy glue on there too, if you like. And then just trim the end. So we're just going to trim the end a little bit there. 
and what you want to do is take the spring and and just stick it inside and like I said if you want to put some um, crazy glue you can if you need to just like use the wire to get it stuck in there the ba the thing is you want the knot to be inside so when you pinch this it's going to hold that knot in place and you don't have to worry about it slipping out so just pinch that shut so your knot will stay inside there and if you're worried just put a dot of crazy glue so there we go and then just kind of fix that up line it up a little bit and then from there we want to put our charm so either get a jump ring or make your own jump ring so to make your own jump ring just bring this around this wire is really too soft to make a jump ring out of but just for the sake of showing you I'm going to show you uh, if you have an 18 gauge it probably would be stronger but uh, the jump rings you buy at the store are generally strong enough to hold in place so we're just going to open that up and stick that on our charm stick that on our little cell phone thing and there you have a really cute one made with a commercial charm so thanks so much for watching the video give it a big thumbs up if you liked it be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more wire art and jewelry making videos hit the notification bell to be notified when i go live and when i post new videos and if you'd like to join my facebook group the wire art and jewelry makers club i'll link it up below and if you'd like to check out my work on etsy my husband and i specialize in custom wire wedding cake toppers and unique jewelry I also send out a monthly newsletter, so if you'd like to sign up below, I'll send you my Wire Art Essentials ebook where I give a list of my supplies and materials and a few tips. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you the next time.